Howdy. Welcome to another week of Canon Calls. I am your host, Jake McAtee. And this week I had Joffrey Swate back on to talk about media. Joffrey hosts his own YouTube channel called Joffrey the Giant. He also has a new venture called Plow and Potato. So he talked about how he thinks about that. How does he think about getting his content out? And one book I had in mind as we talked was Douglas Wilson's Wordsmithy. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. No matter what kind of medium you put your hand to the plow on, it needs to be good. It needs to be full of life and from interesting people, people who have lived a full life. So find Wordsmithy at canonpress.com and welcome back, Joffrey Sway. Okay, now welcoming on special guest, recurring guest now, Joffrey Swate, Joffrey the Giant. Thanks so much for coming back, man. Pleased to now be a two-time champion. That's right. You've joined the ranks of recurring guests, people like, you know, other people that live here. (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) Hey, I thought I was super duper special. Uh, I'm a giant, you know. Let's see. Yeah. Forrest, James and you that may be it you guys may be the most interesting men in the most yeah i agree so last time we talked about poetry and i had i had emailed you and said like i've got big plans for your episode i want to like cover this cover this cover this all things that pertain to your brand i think and i thought joffrey was the guy to do it and then we kind of got off we we just got carried away with yeah sort of what i wanted to talk about which is essentially away by delight that's what happened yeah yeah right (laughs) And I, I still don't know how to do it, but I'm determined everybody that tunes in will eventually love poetry. And, and there have been several people that reach out. They're like, I still don't like it, but you know, they still listen some, for some reason. So <laughs> anyway, so today, what I wanted to talk about, you, we mentioned Joffrey the Giant. Yeah. That is a YouTube channel that features you primarily. Yeah. Sometimes uh, your family. Right. Um, and I wanted to talk about like what you do, you vlog. Yeah. Which, like, I think when people think of vlogging, they think of the Paul brothers mm. and like YouTubers. <laughs> <laughs> which you That's on your mind because your Twitter was basically <laughs> all Paul brothers this weekend. Well, yes. Yeah. Which, uh, which isn't directly, I wouldn't say it necessarily rhymes with your content whatsoever. <laughs> um, so, you know, I want to know how you think about that and is it valuable? And then, even before we started recording, you were telling me like, there were things that you used to do that you no longer do, such as blogging. Right. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And then hoping to culminate in the pipe tobacco world, which you occupy. Which really, and pipe tobacco is what got me online interacting with people. So yeah, I'll be sure to circle back around to that. Perfect. So let's let's just start with uh, your online. Yeah. So you mentioned the Paul brothers. The first place where our worlds (laughs) do not intersect is in the fact that they have 20 or 30 million subscribers. Yeah. Uh, I believe I'm almost to 9,000. Okay. That makes me a big fish in a puddle. Yeah. And a very little fish in the actual ocean. Like, y- yeah. Of negligible note. Right. The nice thing is, is that cool people who talk to me, you watch me. And so there's a whole little community around it and it keeps me fueled, keeps me going. My channel started as a pipe tobacco review channel. Okay. Um, And then people just started talking to me and talking back. I didn't even know I was making, so I made this video and it turned out there were other pipe tobacco nerds out there looking for each other in the early days of YouTube, found me, brought me in, right? So then I started making stuff because I'm just talking to people. Uh, And so to me, to this day, years later, whatever I do online is basically about conversations. But hopefully, you know, conversations where people are producing things for each other, not just commenting. You know, nothing bugs me more, to be quite frank, uh, than someone who interacts with a post or a video you did in the comments with a post of their own, like their own essay. <laughs> yeah. And and they're mad when you don't read it. Yeah. They're like, hey, you put it online. Right. I read your thing. Why won't you read mine? It's like, well, this is my platform. If you'd like to get on your platform, and interact with me, that'd be great. This is the little comment section. Yeah. Anyway, the, the whole community and the interacting conversation aspect is what, is what interests me. When that stopped happening with the blog, I stopped blogging. 
I still do the videos because people all over the world have conversations with me because of the videos. Now, when did you start the blog? I'm curious. Oh, I don't know. Maybe 08, 09. Back um, when they were hot. You know? Yeah, exactly. They were hot. And then they you were. stopped right around when? Probably 2015, 2016. Right around the time podcasts yeah. became a thing. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but the one constant for me has been the YouTube videos, which are vlog style. Yeah. And, and there have been ups and downs. My YouTube audience uh, got us to Brazil as missionaries. Without them, we wouldn't have been able to do it. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that. Like, Yeah. So I started a Patreon at a certain point as I was doing YouTube. And it was still very much, although I was beginning to talk about more than pipe tobacco, it was still a lot of that crew. And uh, I started a Patreon and they were into it for a couple of years. And then one day I said, we want to move to Brazil. How about everybody jack their support up? And they did. Wow. Yeah, it was fabulous. And they, they were not, you know, even like, they weren't even half of what we had, but they were without them, we couldn't, we couldn't have made that move. So it was pretty awesome. When I came back, I killed the Patreon because I sort of wanted to respect what they had done for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're moving to Moscow, you know, right. jack the support up. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> moving again. How yeah. about everybody double? <laughs> hey, bad news. So we're moving again. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so... You did the Patreon thing. Yep. Can you tell me about the content, the nature of the content? So you went from purely pipe to what? Uh, to talking about whatever I want to talk about, <laughs> which is not good brand growth. Like right? I've never sure. followed strategies for how to make your YouTube channel big because what I valued was, you know, the conversations. And, you know, I could tell sometimes when I would drift off what my community liked or was into. And, and sometimes I stuck with it because it was what I wanted to do. And, yep. you know, so. Uh, you know, I've had people who have been with me for over 10 years and people have just hopped on. Uh, and, it, you know, it's all been vlog style. I mean, you use the, I don't, I don't use the term myself, but it's accurate. Yeah. It ends up being about me, but I hope that doesn't sound egomaniacal. No, no, no. It is about you, it, though. It's a connection to yeah, me, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I get to have, you know, when people in, in Brazil or in Russia are messaging me, Joffrey the Giant's kind of a character. But, you know, they're not writing, they're not talking to some academic prosur. They're talking to the dude whose living room they were just in. And that's what I want. Yep. yep. I, and honestly, like, there's a way to do, there's a way to frame what you were just saying in a way that's like, well, this is all, he's an egomaniac. He, it's like maniacal over there. He, right. It's all about him. But to be honest, everything that I'm interested in is necessarily personality driven. Even, you know, we've kind of projected that onto brands now. Yes. And I think that's all for the better. I mean, like if, if there's something, it's what we do with anything with books or movies. It's just like, well, you're going to become like that. You know, it's, it's, I don't think it's a bad thing, even though when we say it like so, it makes you sound like a, you're a crazy person. I think um, there's even a connection possibly to cancel culture as well. Because, you know, you, the, the good thing about building up trust and, you know, having brands represented by people and, and people being brands themselves is that you, can, you, you know who to hold accountable. It's not that Ford is trustworthy. Right. It's that Bobby Sue is trustworthy. Yeah, totally. Totally. But, but that can also lead into, well, well, Bobby Sue's going down, right? But I, I like the personal element that's, that's growing up around just everything online. And, uh, you know, whether you like it or not, you know, it's, it's the shift that's happening. So now the question for Christians has to be you know, how we're going to do this responsibly. Totally. I think that's why I mentioned one time on here that, uh, like the sales world, a transaction is about to happen with two corporate entities. But it happens on a golf course. Right. Yes. This is not, you know, corporate identities do not discuss things or conversate or, but like two guys do on a golf course. You know? Right. So essentially the same thing. Uh, what you just said, though, can you say again about how Christians should be thinking about this? Well, yeah, just that all, all I said was that they should be responsible. How do you think we're doing on that? Oh, goodness. Well, I, I think that most of us aren't even aware that this is <laughs> what's happening but, you know, so I, I was watching a TV show just yesterday, uh, some random British show, and it being British has nothing to do with it. I don't know why I mentioned it. Some sort <laughs> well, of snobbery. Well, it also indicates to our listeners, you're not just watching some show. Right. It's a British show. Well, it's a British show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So, yeah, some cop show. Anyway, all the characters are older on purpose. It's okay. called New Tricks, the show. Okay. Um, and uh, the, in one particular episode, this older man, one of the police officers, he's been retired and brought back. Uh, he has to go up to the sixth floor where all the techies are so they can do something techie for him. Uh, and he's up in the elevator and all these, all these people in suits keep walking in with all their devices open. And this is like 05 or 06. 
So everybody has like their Blackberries and their little flip phones, but everything's beeping and bonging and whistling around him. He's just getting grumpier and grumpier as the elevator goes up and more of these techies and suits come in. So he just lets them all leave and then he presses G for ground again and just goes back down and calls a guy he knows who can hopefully get it done for him as well. And he does. Okay. And I think that we've, you know, business used to be done much more that way, right? The conversation on the golf course that you mentioned. And then we got all of these machines and huzzah, I don't have to talk to anybody. I can just push all these buttons and the magic happens. I think we're coming through the other side now and people are wanting to get business done in person anyway, because they see all the problems that can happen and the, the spinning of wheels that happens when all you rely on is, is technology and processes. But we've got a couple of generations stuck in there, including mine who don't want to do business on the golf course, right? right. Or who view it with disdain, like only smarmy salesmen yes. are going are gonna to actually do this um, when it's in fact how most of humanity has ever done it. This is touching on some of the stuff we talked about in, our last, uh, in, our, in the last interview. But anyway, all that to say, I think that the Christian community, Christian thought leaders, uh, they just haven't caught up to that, to this idea. The people who are aware of it, I think, tend to be positive about it because they're attuned enough to those sorts of things and the personal touch to have noticed it. Yeah. Right. We can still, it's still very easy to get lost in technology. So I don't, you know, I don't think most of uh, the Christian blogosphere, videosphere, whatever sphere, social media sphere is even aware that that's what's happening, but it's going to come up as the years go by. And it'll be way late for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I think about with, um, so the election happened a few weeks ago, if you remember, mm. did you, did you watch like, a uh, did you watch anything that night? Yeah, I watched a couple of podcasts, like video yeah. streams. Right. Yeah. There's no way I was going to watch the news. Of course not. And like, that was my thing. I was just like, I just don't know which one it'll be. Right. I ended up watching Steven Crowder's. Me too, dude. Yeah. Which I think reached like insane numbers. Yes. Yeah. Like there were they, half a million throughout the day. Which they, I think, surpassed everyone in the news world, you know, like the CNNs. Yeah. And like, you can't count the airports or whatever, but like, I think they surpassed everyone and uh, several people I talked with that didn't, or, you know, and I was just like, I just don't know what would drive you to watch CNN or, or anything else. But like I said, they are out there light years ahead of everyone. Yes. And it is personality driven and that's fine too. Well, but you know, it's significant that you are. Although a mighty fellow, a, a young fellow yes. with, uh, you know, relatively low in the corporate totem, you know, totem yep. pole, like the, you, right? And that's, there are people like your bosses and bosses, bosses generation. Yes. There's a, you know, those people are way more likely to have some sort of news channel turned on. Correct. Without making value claims, we are definitely seeing what appeals. Yep. Right. So your first thought is. Right. Is, you know, okay, I'm going to turn on Fox News. I'm going to turn on CNN. Or is your first thought, I'm going to go to that. I mean, I hadn't watched Steven Crowder in four years. It didn't matter Same. when I like, you know, when I, ne when I needed, like, I know I'm going to watch this for like all day. Right. And I know I can't handle the, 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 the station. So what we you know, it's going to be Steven Crowder. I knew, I knew about him. I used to watch him before when he was still Canadian. <laughs> before he became yeah. a U.S. citizen. Yeah. But yeah. And he was on Fox News. Probably back then. Yeah. So anyway, it is a very fascinating time and it seems obvious that uh, the views, I think the views have been trending this way regardless, right? Like I think even yeah. obviously Spotify acquiring Joe Rogan, but I mean like Rogan had had views that beat cable for years. Oh yeah. Yeah. For years and years. So. And, but you know, people are tempted to look at all of this and evaluate it the same way they evaluated mass media, right? Um, and, you know, certainly like platforms have to be leveraged, you know, Twitter and Facebook and Google, they are absolute monsters bigger than any, you know, TV network yep. could have dreamed of being. So right. it's, it's not about that, but what it is about is, is the personality and people using multiple platforms. You actually do interact with, you know, the product Joe Rogan is putting out there. And if, if Spotify shuts him down, Joe Rogan's not going away. Right. right? And I think that's where that connects to to vlogging, to you and me, to random schmucks who like talking to people yep. is that, you know, you can go ahead and you can do that and it's okay that it's about you. And then in fact, people are starting to change how they take in content and they're making it more personal. They don't just want to know about military history 
or current affairs or knitting techniques. They want to connect to that particular knitter, to that particular think tank guru, whatever it is. Totally. And I think this, I, I brought up several times, like this is how certain sports media has gone to where you find that ESPN's numbers haven't been great because it's still, they're still doing so much that is within ESPN brand. Right. And, and all Pac of- McAtee is exploding. Yes. Uh, McAfee. McAfee. Right? McAfee. Yeah. Yes. So McAfee, right. Exactly. He's just his own thing, but all of a sudden he's got numbers that are huge. Right. Barstool Sports always talks about, they run on personality fundamentally. Mm-hmm. Like that's where they, they just get people, Joe Schmoes, right. like not huge people. And that's where their brand is run. And they're, they're, they're also very big. So yeah. I think it has been almost a turnover on whatever mass media. Yeah. And well, you know, really, I think, I think the, the, where this, the rubber meets the road here, the point of contact uh, for people listening is not that, you know, like you too could be snatched from obscurity <laughs> the way like, you know, some agent in the 1960s spotted you at a nightclub yes. and turned you into the greatest singer of all time. It's not that. What it's saying is people want a personal connection and it's legitimate of you to frame your conversations online as personal connection. Right. right? You don't have to sit there and write the most brilliant expose ever. I mean, that's cool too. Right. But you, know, you can talk about what you've been studying. I mean, there's a, there's a YouTuber I watch He's a, a complete Latin geek, right? But I don't watch it. I, I, I actually don't love Latin that much. Like, I know enough Latin to f- follow what he's saying yeah. for like an hour and 20 minutes. Is this in Latin? No. Sorry. No, no, no. Okay. But he's talking about yeah, Latin all the time, it, right? Okay. And, but like, I, I'm learning as I'm going through it, but it's him. Yeah. Somehow, you know, it gets suggested to me. I watch him. I like him. I like his aquiline nose, his self-deprecating humor. And next thing I know, I'm geeking out over Latin. Yeah. It, and I think it's been a, while everybody's just getting caught up on, oh, this is personality driven. I think it always has been. And we just now understand that. Or, you know, we're, I think we're only now yeah. fundamentally, it, it's never, it just always was. It's never that we. Well, well and that's the cry of, of you know, I, <laughs> I keep referring to previous generations as if I were some, some youth. Those of you who are watching should know that my beard is snow white. Well, it's more like slushy snow. No, it's, like it's, it's you got a, like a, uh, oh, what's that guy's so, name? Are you going to, are you going to say I look like the walking dead no. bad guy? Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, well, no, this was gonna be a huge compliment. Ocean, I'm thinking Ocean's Eleven. George Clooney. Yeah. That is huge. Thank you've you. You've got a Clooney. You've got, he's clooney He's not Snow White. So you may hate me for saying this, but people have said that before. <laughs> the key is to not look at my belly. <laughs> But I'm definitely going to tell Kimberly, my wife, that once again, yeah. someone pulled out the George Clooney thing. The Can of Calls guy, which is going to go really far. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Okay. I had something super important to say. That's and right. then you were like, you look like George Clooney and I'm, um, I have a little bit of a crush you, on so you. You were going to say something about previous generations. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I keep referring to previous generations like I'm not 43, 42, however old I am. People are just get outraged that you would trust, say, someone like Steven Crowder yeah, yeah, yeah. over CBS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But it's exactly to your point. There were people behind those agencies when they mattered. Yep. Right? And we not only did we connect to Dan Rather and Walter Conkrite, like he's my man, I trust yeah. him as if he was writing the news. <laughs> right? I mean, what, <laughs> right. what a joke. But right. you know, I trust Walter Cronkite. And so you know, all, all of those faces that you never saw behind the networks were still there steering their ship, laying out their totally. agenda. Totally. Now there's actually a little more chance for variety because it's all out there. I mean, this is kind of the flag I carry for, uh, for the, the objectivity of the press, the neutrality of the press. Let's all admit that it doesn't exist. Let's just do yellow journalism, all of us. Yeah. And then the more reasonable people will emerge. Can we all just stop pretending that we're neutral? Nobody ever was. For a brief time in the 20th century, we kind of pulled it off. Everyone like collaborated in creating the illusion yeah. of neutrality. Yep. Created a sort of a center. But of course it fell apart soon after. Right. And no one wrote newspapers that way in 1850. Right. Right. I mean, it was a very temporary brief thing. It actually right. harms us to pretend that it exists. Right. So why not latch onto personalities? Like, you know, totally. Steven Crowder has this whole little team. It's not just him. Right. It's like 20 dudes. So it's the same thing as watching CBS, I'm afraid. Yeah. And I will say, big shout out. The only dude that matters, audio weight. 
way it starts. <laughs> yeah. Listener of the show, maybe. We'll oh, find okay. out. We'll, we'll yeah. find out if I get a text <laughs> if he heard it. So Perfect. Yes. So now that we've covered the turn of media, do you want to tell me about the vlog hustle? Like, so I am privy to the vlogging world in a very like not personal way. But it seems like a real hustle. Like they're like hustling. I heard there's like a thing about the length of the vlogs that YouTube. Oh, yeah. You know, subsidizes a certain length of time. I don't know. I mean, where are the breaks on this? Like, are you going to be doing TikTok soon or like? (laughs) (laughs) So I have a colleague who is like 24 or so. Okay. And because of him, I finally like opened a TikTok account. Oh. And then I shut it down. Because it's a closed universe. I thought you were going to say you started a podcast. Well, I did start a podcast with him. What's that? But called? that's a separate thing. Plow and potato. <laughs> yeah. And someone on Are Facebook you... who's also a Canon press fan shared the podcast she yeah. was listening to. Uh-huh. And there were several Canon uh, podcasts. And there was also the plow and potato. Logo. Oh, nice. Yeah. Look at that. I felt good. Yeah. You're up we're there, you know. Why, t- was taking it... some of your real estate. It's well, not a big deal. Was it Canon calls? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was among there. Yeah. You don't have to lie to me. No, it was among there. Okay. Like they were all up there though. Like okay. this person was a true Canon press oh, okay. fan. Got it. Got it. Well, good. Yeah. So you're keeping the podcast, but you're deleting your talk. Right. Because it's just a closed little world. And I was already quite skeptical of it, but I don't actually get to connect to people. You know, I said for me, it was about community. TikTok is, is, is all about numbers. Right? It's all about the Chinese into your account right yeah yeah Yeah, for sure i buy that yeah yeah same um i mean like you know youtube has their own you know they have what they're trying to do but they allow me to do what i want to do on there yeah without penalizing me or penalizing me too much and you know there are like you know if 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 you're limited to short little clips and little audio things you can add and all that it just just limits the the message you can have and like I, i noticed right away so I gave it a little bit of information about me and then TikTok, TikTok. And then I watched like one video with some construction worker in Mexico. All of my TikToks <laughs> are Mexican construction workers <laughs> and I can't get out of the loop. <laughs> it's, it's a very particular niche. <laughs> but like it just reinforces it, right? Yeah. It doesn't lay, it makes it very difficult on purpose by design. They make it difficult to go finding other things. Okay. Uh, you know, if, if a friend of yours says, I really like this particular guy, right? There are okay. ways to get out of the loop, but you can't use the platform by yourself exploring things. They, they've actually designed it to funnel you. So, I'm, yeah, I'm not. And actually, the, the, what makes it worse is that I like videos of Mexican yeah, construction sure, workers. Sure. Like, sure. There's some funny stuff. You know, yeah. we're dancing while we're putting the rebar down. <laughs> to be uh, honest, but the just next thing them, I know, I can't get out. So just to be watching them work. I mean, like, uh, there's also, I've seen, um, <laughs> I've seen, what would it be? Just like uh, blocked pipes. Mm-hmm. So they dig a hole in your ground and yeah. like unclog your pipes. Oh, yeah. Okay. But like that, uh, you know, you could just get stuck in that world. Yeah, you uh, could. Un- one could. <laughs> Is one speaking from personal experience? <laughs> <laughs> I used a bunch of those recently to send to a coworker just talking about like, here's us at work getting uh, out of like, right. you know, it just looks like pure Roto-Rooter. chaos. Roto-Rooter. Yeah. 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 Roto-Rooter kind of stuff. Yeah. Roto-Rooter talk is a real, is a real talk. So, um, all I'd say you, you've, you have put that aside. Yeah. So, okay, then as a media person, why, why the podcast? Why have you, I assume you, because I've, so I've seen it. Yep. You have bravely stepped forward with a white male who said, I will podcast. <laughs> I've heard a lot. <laughs> I get a lot of yeah. grief about yes. me, a white male starting a podcast and the bravery that it, that took. Yeah. And it's interesting that you say with a white male, we'll have yeah. to unpack that a little later off, <laughs> off, off mic. Uh, yeah. I am, I am of uncertain whiteness. Uncertain? Uh, well, people yeah. seem very confused about my whiteness. In How fact, whiteness? my podcast partner yeah. thinks I'm not white. Well, I think. What do you think? Well, I think I've told you, you, you've given me Spanish men vibes in the past. Yeah. 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 But then when I saw you were in Brazil for a time, I was like, maybe that checks out. Yeah. And maybe Spanish people are white. So well, it's the whole thing. Yeah. Now it's getting weird. Let's go back to the topic, which is I bravely stepped forward with a white dude and made a podcast. And yeah, I've had to employ the shh, let people enjoy things meme 
several times in my own defense because <laughs> it is actually getting a little tiresome. Like let people have podcasts and yeah. who cares if nobody listens well, to them. I appreciate them. that. I you appreciate know? that. Hey, you're welcome, white man. I'm yeah, here to defend you. I appreciate you. that a lot. Um, <laughs> I luckily get to hide behind Canon Press. You know, this isn't me. Right. Yeah, it's legitimate. Yeah. Well, Plow and Potato is actually for Kepler. Oh, okay. Technically, like Got that's, it. yeah. No, that's great. Um, but, you know, it is, it is, we've made it on purpose just to show about us and the stuff we like. Yep. And we're trying to build a community around it. So we have a Discord and all that. And that's the multi platform thing where, you know, you want to create conversation. What's a Discord? Uh, a, so Discord is a, is a social. You're building a unifying community around Plow and Potato. Discord. Yes. That's what, yes. Right. The, the content that generates all the interaction is out there on yeah. wherever. I was right. making a metaphor. Or, 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 oh, on Discord. Discord. It's a, unit, it's a yeah. joke. Yeah, sorry, I see. It's yeah. It's yeah. It's all right, now, are you asking for the audience or do you not no, know No, I actually Discord... don't know. I've heard people talk about. Okay. I assume. Perfect. Is it? Um... So Discord is, I mean, it's a perfect name because it was made for video gaming. So Discord is a perfect name okay, for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, it's like a closed social media platform like, say, WhatsApp. Okay. Okay. But Americans never really got on to, uh, into WhatsApp. And it actually has a lot of features that are that are extra beneficial uh, for for social interaction. But it is closed, so only people you invite, people you share links with, you end up on what they what they call a server. And you can create all sorts of channels for typed conversation, for voice conversation, for video calls. And you know, if I want to play a video game with you, and I'm on the other side of town, mm -hmm. and we want to voice chat, video games and video game systems aren't always reliable. So we get in Discord. Got it. And we use my Discord to hang out. But very quickly that evolved to, hey, I'm a streamer. I do video games. Everybody who likes me come hang out in this Discord. Next thing you know, there are 5,000 people in it. So Discord adjusted to handle that. Now it's, I have a YouTube channel about conservative Judaism and I want you to join my Discord. So we're in check that, in you, that Check your feelings of, at the door, facts only. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we're doing. So it's, uh, it's very straightforward to use. Basically, like a, a, a Facebook that is much tighter and closed. What's the other? Was there by invite? What was the other forum, social media platform where like a, a Reddit? Oh yeah, yeah. Is it Reddit? No, dude. It's actually much more conversational. Reddit is here's the freakish thing that I found online. Uh -huh. Everybody react. Got it. Then the next freakish thing, and then the next freakish thing. And you can upvote. Right. Yeah, exactly. Replies yes, or something. you're okay. right. So this is different. You know, yeah, it is. So you got your Reddits, your 4 chans, all your your wackiness. Okay. This is, you know, but I, I can go pretty much anywhere on Reddit if I want yeah, to, yeah, if yeah, I have yeah. the link, right? Uh, this is, a, these are closed, closed groups. groups. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sweet. Very cool. And I assume- is So you should join my Discord. Yeah. Well, I- The Plow and Potato Discord. I've never been invited. So I, or I've never been invited to a Discord period. So I'm very excited to be invited. And how do you decide like what to talk about there? You said it's for Kepler, which is a- is a particular online schooling right. media yep. hub. So Yeah, but Plow and Potato, we've made its own separate thing. So okay. we want Plow and Potato to be for younger families mostly, okay. right? So parents who are from their mid-20s, their upper 30s are kind of who we're mostly targeting. Uh, and so, you know, we have little channels in the Discord to talk about the church, to talk theology, to talk history, to talk the home to share recipes. Oh, nice. One of the things I really like about the Plow and Potato Discord is that it's a lot of men and women. Joffrey the Giant is 95% men. Plow and Potato, it's like half and half, and that makes me really happy. So I, we just have the channels labeled whatever, and we just we have a part, place for memes and other you know crazy internet shenanigans if, if you want, and we just talk. Yeah. Is there a Discord app? Like, is it an app? Is an app or a browser cool. equal, equally? Very cool. Yeah, and I will invite you. I really appreciate that. Yeah. I've never been in one. Pretty <laughs> well, excited. as the social media guru for Canon Press, you yeah. should at least be aware. Right. Well, I got a parlor. Oh, yeah. For myself and for Canon. <laughs> really don't like parlor. <laughs> no, I don't either, man. It's really torture. Yeah. It's really torture. But um, we ha you have to be on parlors. So you can be part of the vast right-wing conspiracy. Right. Please join today. Please join today. And I, yeah, it is very fun. It's a very, it's a very funny moment in, yeah. uh, in, in the social media world. So I'm always willing to try whatever, right? Like TikTok was described to me a mm -hmm. long time ago. Mm -hmm. I thought that sounds horrible. Musically. A couple of people I like, yes, exactly. And it began to morph, of course, but a couple of people I like said, I kind of like it. So I went and I checked it out. It was indeed horrible, but I'm willing to try anything on social media. I feel like you didn't really even see the ninth circle of TikTok. No, no, I know I didn't. <laughs> 
Yeah. I got mad that that was locked in this little <laughs> closet. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know what? I could kick the door down. I'm not gonna. Yeah. Okay. Now you've made reference several times to generations. Mm-hmm. What generation do you inhabit? So I don't like to say I'm Gen X. Okay. But, you know, so depending on how you divide it, I end up being Gen X. There's a, there are a lot of terms thrown around for older millennials slash younger Gen okay. X, right? Xennials. Really? Been thrown around. You've never heard Xennial? Mm. Yeah, I kind of dislike that too. When I hear talks about like work habits of the generations, yep. blah, blah, I'm totally millennial. Okay. Um, Interesting. But, you know, and, and I've been exposed to technology, f- you know, from, you know, whenever. Like I've always been comfortable with technology. Um, I do enjoy the cynicism of the of the Gen Xers, okay. But I didn't spend my childhood in the '80s here. Like I never saw Sixteen Candles. I never thought oh, okay John Cusack was the cat's meow. Like all of that, I learned in the '90s. Like other people my age. Where were you? I was in Brazil. Not without a television. That is not like very white. <laughs> by the way, I need to teach you so much about Brazil. <laughs> I guess so. But I, mean, I just you know Giselle Bundchen is from Brazil. From where I was in Brazil. But you didn't see 16 Candles in the 80s? No. Well, we didn't have a TV, first of all. Okay. Um, okay also. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Just... <laughs> so, so weird. What do, you, uh, what do you call soccer? I call soccer, soccer. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a point in your direction. Well, yeah. White. But I mean, if you say football, it could mean anything. To you? Well, no. I mean, if you said football, okay. you. <laughs> okay. But I say soccer. And soccer is actually a legitimate name. That many Englishmen use. Okay. The Australians and Kiwis use it too. Would you like to know how soccer got its name? Sure. So there were many codes of football evolving from medieval games, villages, kicking balls back and forth between, you know, they still get done between their villages, whatever. In the 19th century, a lot of them started getting codified. It's where rugby football came from, for example. Okay. And it was recognized as, oh, this is a form of football. What kind of football? Oh, it's rugby football. Interesting. So then someone came up with the rules and the codes for what we call soccer now. Okay. And, okay, what kind of football is this? Because there's rugby football, there's Gaelic football, there's all these footballs. Oh, this is association football. There was an association of clubs that played this. They said, we're going to call this association football. So then if you played rugby football, you were called a rugger. If you played association football, they weren't going to call you an asser. <laughs> so they <laughs> called you a soccer. This is a kid's show, by the way. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> they called you a soccer. So rugby players are ruggers. Yeah, yeah. Association players are soccers. It's a bit of a stretch, but that's where it comes from. Wow. Yeah. Which so which is why in Australia, where they have Australian rules football and rugby football and rugby league football, they have soccer because they have to draw that distinction. If you yeah. go to Brazil, they never had to. Like they only ever played that one kind of football. This checks out. A sure lot does. of a lot of boxes for me. I interrupted though. You were telling me that you watched things in the '90s that actually came out in the '80s, right? Did they? And only like like it, as a retrospect, like I should catch up on what's been going on. Like why you know all, the people should keep you? quoting mi- these movie lines. Yeah. What do you What do you hear most often? I mean, you you got my. Um, I mean, not to toot my own horn again, but like my. Uh, so I married an axe murderer. Yes, reference well, that last was podcast. like ninety one, ninety two. Okay, right, and that was. So that, you were here. Yeah, I was here. Yeah. yeah. And my, you know, my dad thought that movie was awesome and, and so, and, and I did too. But yeah, that was right around the time I became sort of aware of American culture. And anything before that is a studied thing, including okay. the things that should be not like a native to my age. I don't have them. I had did to adopt them. Did you watch like the X-Files? No. I started watching television style shows after 2010. Oh, okay. So you missed it. Yeah. I missed a lot of, of everything. It increases my foreign What was field. the first thing you jumped in? Music. Okay. Like. So when I was getting, like when I was leaving, no. Oh, on TV. Well, you said television. Yeah, I did. I'm yeah. just curious. I don't, I don't. Yeah, I guess maybe I watched, I started watching The Walking Dead. Maybe that was when I started watching. Okay. That checked. Shows. Yeah. Yeah, that works out. Okay. We sure have meandered. We like really wildly. have. Basically, you're a Brazilian. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I am. I, I am. I am a hundred percent Brazilian and a hundred percent American. I have two passports, dude. Okay, covenantally, I am more American than I am Brazilian. Got it. Covenantally, well, I mean, I suppose. You know, I just I, mean in terms of like you are, by definition, with the thing. You could be over there, over here. Yes. Right. You are that. Yeah. And if someone 
told me I could only be American, I would fight them. If someone told me I could only be Brazilian, I would fight them. Uh, but I am more American than Brazilian. If there could be one 100% that's much stronger than the other. Hun- than the other 100%? Yeah. The, the American side is. But I'm not willing to relinquish oh, that 100%-ness yes. for both. You know how this got started, this uh, meander? I asked you what generation you were. Oh, yes. Because that was leading to, let's say there are older people listening. Yeah. That uh, have heard your points, especially mm-hmm. in terms of like what they, how they watch things or habits. You know, is my first thought to turn on Fox or is my first thought to turn on MSN, you know, mainstream media. Right. You've heard it. You've heard of it. Like, do you, would you, let's say you were just talking to somebody at Thanksgiving and they're like, this is what I watch. Would you be like, did you know there's other stuff or like, how would you broach that topic with anyone? Like, how come? My dad still like gets home to watch the six o'clock news, local yeah. news. And it's, it's like, do you not have Twitter? Do you like, do you, you don't have any? Yeah, I, I was talking to a, a colleague of mine this morning about how easy it is to be radical um, and that more Christians should try to be radical. Is this a David Platt jo- joke or is this? It's not a joke. A bit? Nope. David Platt bit. I don't even know who David Platt is. <laughs> he wrote the book Radical. Oh, okay. Thanks. No, now you know this is like, like this is me and my friend just talking. <laughs> totally 100% original thoughts. If it sounds like Platt, uh, never mind. It's about to be ironic or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. Okay. Yeah, all right. yeah. So it's so easy to like read a bunch of books about presuppositionalism and church history and theology and think to yourself, I examine all of my actions and I examine all my motives. And I know why we're making these decisions with my family, why we're making these decisions about education. This is why we're talking about it, because we're touching on education. All these decisions we're making, I know why. The problem is, is that we often have focused so much, we're we're so narrow in how we're training ourselves, educating ourselves, that we don't realize that we lack the perspective to actually have some objectivity, right? This is why it's good to read fiction. This is why it's good to read poetry. It's good to learn how to cook when you don't know how to cook. It's good to travel. Just have a breadth of experience so that you actually can have some objectivity as you step outside your presuppositions and say, yeah, yeah, that's, it's not simply a matter of walking down the line of a, of a theology book, but you have some experience to say, yeah, in fact, those dudes are totally whack and this is the right way to go and I will go on this way. So when you have that sort of breadth, I think it's actually easier to be radical okay. because when you don't have that sort of breadth, every step upon the path of that's late, less chosen yep. seems that much more difficult because you have to think about every step. Yep. You know, you have come to a certain conclusion, but you're not, op- you're not breathing the air of, you know, of just objectivity and breadth of experience. And so you just are plodding along and every step is arduous. So when you're homeschooling, you have to keep reminding yourself of why you're homeschooling. And I'm not sure what to tell my mom when she asks me why I'm doing this crazy thing. And right, so you're you're, you're just, every step is arduous. But when you have read what leftist poets in Paris thought and realized they were fruitcakes, but here's the good stuff we had. And then that time I traveled to New England and I talked to that guy, right? You just have all this breadth of experience going into it. You realize that, in fact, this is just one more brand of crazy, one more brand of radical. There were respectable people, people I thought were respectable, being hobos in Utah before becoming professors. And I'm doing this crazy thing, too, but it's, I have this wide context to make that being radical easier. Okay. Right? And so, the, you know, the way this, this connects to media is previous generations were spoon-fed all their information right? The networks, the few newspapers, we will tell you what to think. And generally it was palatable and we were amenable to it. So fine. Then the whole thing falls apart, right? And younger people are having to you know, piece these things back together. But the fact that they've had this wide exposure to all these different things makes them much more judicious in what they choose. They have opinions about what they choose, but those opinions actually come to them easier because they've been exposed to all right. this stuff. So I guess the thing I would say to the older generations is that it's not as hard as it might seem. You can go get your own information, right? You can go get your own sources. You can connect to your own personalities, you know, these other personalities. 
I mean, how, you know, how many of us from age 80 to age 15, like none of us, like we'll go to a public library and check out a book, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that, that, the, the, that still exists as a possibility, but you know, at least on the internet, you can trust a 25 year old or a 15 year old to go find the things as much as they can. Maybe not some older folks. Right? So would you recommend like, uh, here's a Twitter account. Oh, you don't have to tweet, but like, you know, here's goodness. some, like follow some, follow these key personalities and then see what your timeline looks like. Or, you know, what are maybe some like practical steps? What, what are Joffrey's two practical steps to becoming disillusioned with the mainstream media? Ooh, no, no, no. Yeah. I'm looking for a head, I need a headline <laughs> big time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do. And, you know, unfortunately, most of my social media is extremely personal. But, you know, maybe, let's see, besides getting in the plow and potato discord. <laughs> mm. Let's say some other George Clooney looking fellow. Okay. Was just like, what, do I, what should I do? What, would, what do you do? And you're like, join the discord or would you be like, start with a YouTube channel? Oh, yeah, yeah. Not that they have to produce content, but like in terms of just even receiving. Right. So, you know, I, I actually think that a lot of the tools that larger social media use to steer you can end up being sort of useful. I mean, you know, Facebook at this point, it's just all an echo chamber. Totally. Uh, but even with Twitter, you know, you, you, you follow a few people you know. Next thing you know, they're talking about so-and-so who's talking about so-and-so. And, you yep. know, you can create this, this, this chain of, of, of follows and you end up following a few big people. Um, I don't follow anyone on Twitter who has more than, say, 100,000. I mean, it's kind of a random number, but I don't follow huge people because it does me no good, right? right? You know, I, I follow people who, who have earned a following that pays attention to them, that interacts with them. They post stuff that they think is interesting to their audience for conversation, right? These are people who are still just small enough to talk back yep, to people, right? It. And when you're doing that, there's accountability to the content. Uh, so I would just follow the, the friends of friends until you get to some scholars and some theologians. You know, my Twitter is full of theology and it's not because I followed any theologians, theologians directly. Right. It was because I followed friends who followed theologians. The next thing you know, when you talk about platforms that offer like there's, you know, more about video or then I just pay attention to how they say they talk to people. Um, you know, there are plenty of people I follow on YouTube that are just, you know, I just watch their videos sometimes, but. Then there are people who I want to know what the people around them are saying, what they're saying to their, to their watchers, their fans. Right. Uh, so then I'll, I'll go to wherever, but you know, it's at this point, everything is so cross platform that, you know, however you stumble across that personality, if you think that this person is, is going to do good in your life, you should check out everything they're doing, decide what you're into, if any of it, and then, you know, move on, move on to the next one. But you know, it really is what is happening now, I think, is that is that communities are forming. Um, and so, you know, being a part of a community or two online, I think, could be a really helpful and contributive part of your life, as opposed to just simply absorbing column after column, blog post after blog post, having conversations. Yep. I, I even think just a posture of curiosity will serve a lot of folks well. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You know, just being curious about what this guy's up to. Oh, I followed that guy till I didn't anymore. I don't right. care for that. Which, which is what I did with Steven Crowder all these years yeah. ago. Yeah. Right. And, and I then think, as soon as I needed him, he was there for me. <laughs> I think it goes too to what you were saying about having enough experience for perspective. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's exactly. like where you could go back into the Crowder world and be like, I know what I know here and I'm enjoying this. So I don't have to love. Yeah. I don't know. I think it helps that, that, that anxiety. Yeah. Absolutely. You, you were, you were pushing against. So, well, what do you say we talk about pipe tobacco next time? Yeah, we'll do it. Uh, um, how, about I, how about I play a little uh, little sound effect? Uh, as yeah, a, you did as bring it in. I feel bad. So tell me what it is first. So this is uh, Barbary Coast from GLPs. It is mostly a burly blend, and I tend not to smoke burlies. Sneak preview. Well, what I'm looking at for folks that are not watching, you know, the Twitch stream here, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's what appears to be like a tuna can. Yeah, it appears to be a tuna can, but it's full of delightful tobacco. In fact, it's full of Burley's chosen for its deep, nutty flavor, forming a robust foundation for a sophisticated blend. Rich red Virginia tobaccos added for their subtle sweetness and complexity, etc. So yeah. this tobacco episode is going to be amazing when, yeah. it, when it does come, out, come around. See, we made a key mistake. We f I'm sure it was fascinating. It was fascinating. Comment below wherever you're watching <laughs> to tell us that it was fascinating. We started talking about social media. That was a mistake because... Pull it. Oh, oh, the sound of opening a tobacco tin. Yeah. 
So good. And the smell, boys and girls, smells like apple cider vinegar. Wow. Huh? But you There's never expected tobacco hates to smell like that. The vinegar. Yeah. But then that apple comes in quickly. Yeah. And says it's. And one of the things we, we, we'll, we'll talk about is how much variety is possible because no flavors were added. How much variety is possible with the different types of tobacco and how we cure them. But that's for another episode. Um, has anyone ever been on three times? Yeah. <laughs> that'll, that'll put me even in more elite company. Oh, yeah. Who's that? Um, Forrest? James? Forrest and James. And then you, eventually. Okay. Um, well, I just want to know who my competition is. Just Forrest and James. Okay. I'm going to go tell Forrest. Darren, you, Darren did it twice. Basically, this is what I said, guys who live here. <laughs> don't, don't act like I'm not important. Brian Cole. Dude. No, you are. <laughs> These are very important people. Yeah, very. Because it's your podcast. Of course, everyone on here is, is of vital interest to our Christian community. To our, to our thriving community <laughs> <Yes>. here in <laughs> Moscow. Um, and beyond. And beyond. So, Joffrey, Joffrey the Giant, go find him on YouTube. I wish we had a cool poem to end with. Mm. You did a cool poem last time. That's true. How about, I never saw a purple cow. I never hoped to see one. But I can tell you anyhow, I'd rather see them be one. <laughs> I forget who wrote that, but it's not mine. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Cheers. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.